It's time to start. Good evening and welcome to the meeting of the Lasher County School Board on August 16th, 2022. Please stand and join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, now, before we adopt the agenda, I had talked to a couple of board members that might need to pull an item, uh, and the certain you're good on that. Uh, and uh, Ms. Russell, did you have one you needed to pull? We're good. Okay, we're all good. Excellent. Okay, do I have a motion to um, approve the agenda as uh, printed uh, with the one exception? If you have the printed copy, uh, this was not a good night for the, the two math teams to be here, so that'll be at a later time. Uh, so that's the only correction, but do I have a motion to, to accept the uh, agenda as changed? I'll move. Second. Okay, motion by Ms. Russell, seconded by Ms. Certain. Uh, any discussion? Now, I, Mr. Hyatt, I think that was Dr. McNeely that made the motion. Oh. I did. Okay, I'm sorry, Dr. McNeely. That's okay. Did Did you say you had a? No, I, I motioned for. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, we sound like we had. Sometimes we can't. I have to wait for motions. I think I had three at the same time. Uh, so, um, okay, motion by Dr. McNeely, seconded by Ms. Certain. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Uh, next, the approval uh, of the special board meeting and public hearing <laughs> minutes from August 2nd. Do I have a motion to uh, accept that? Second. Motion by Ms. Russell, seconded by Ms. Certain. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Uh, approval of the regular school board meeting minutes also from August 2nd. Uh, do I have a motion? Move to accept the uh, um, minutes from August 2nd as presented. Do I have a second? Yes. Motion by Ms. Certain, seconded by Dr. Paulson. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Um, now we have uh, board member superintendent announcements. And um, first, Ms. Russell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as we all know, we had a wonderful uh, teacher empowerment. Uh, summit a couple of weeks ago and then we had a family empowerment night which was really awesome very good presentations and great encouragement for families um, I really wish more families had been there because it was a very very good night and wonderful information uh, so a shout out to uh, those who organized that and also I just want to say that you know welcome back to school we had um, we're in our second week, and there have been some glitches, but not hundreds of them. So that we're off to a good start, I think, and uh, we're very optimistic about the school year. So that's, that's okay. It. Thank you. Do I have any other comments, uh, Ms. Certain? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Welcome back to our staff and students. I would also like to extend to the board um, the thanks and appreciation from the directors of the Freedom School, which was funded by the Children's Trust and hosted over at Duval this past summer. Um, they had a really good week, and I will share the video in which was put together highlighting some of the things they did this past summer there. But the site that was here, hosted here by... Um, at Duval by the University of Florida, Dr. Brown and Dr. 
her name is escaping me right now. The second lady will come to me. But um, they were recognized for having an exemplary program there at Freedom School, which is really hard to get that particular designation. And the site here has been recognized as that. So we're looking forward to a second year of them. Next year, they're going to be starting to plan to be able to host more students um, next year. And I'm not sure if it'll be at Duval, but we're we, our county, the students from our county did get some ins um, good instruction in reading and support this past summer over at Duval Elementary, the former site of Duval. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Certain, I, I, I think that's really excellent news, and uh, I think it would be great if we could have the folks running the school maybe to come by and spend five or ten minutes letting us know how things went. And uh, would you like to send that to them? Do that. Let's let's see if we can maybe do that for the next meeting. I'll do that. I, I think that would be great. Thank you. Um, and uh, uh, Superintendent Andrew. Thank you, Chairman Hyatt. So I just wanted to take a moment as we uh, start the meeting here to definitely thank all of our teachers, staff, every single department. Uh, we pulled together last week and started school midweek and we had a smooth start. And so I would just like to say thank you to everyone here in Alachua County Public Schools. Uh, everybody pulled together. That early start on Wednesdays, you know, our elementary schools, food and nutrition services were pulling lunch together quickly. Our transportation had to get them on the buses early and get them home. And certainly, um, you know, that middle of the week start, we had to try to get students and families and everybody into a groove midweek. So I just want to thank everybody in all departments, no matter which department and which employee it is in our school district, all of us pulled together to really get off to a good start. Um, I had the chance to visit 15 of our schools in the first five days, and I, I just saw everybody in action, so I got to witness it. Everyone's doing a wonderful job. Uh, this week, I could tell people are back into the swing. Um, kids were actually starting to get used to getting up early. I saw kindergarten or first graders that mentioned to me they were tired and yawning, and it's early. Mom's getting me up. And so, um, but I think we're coming around this week. Uh, we're looking forward to visiting more schools here. Uh, our team's been out and about, so I just thank everybody. It was also good to share with parents, our districts, and our communities resources at the parent. Empowerment Summit on August 8th. So I echo um, what our fellow board member mentioned just a few minutes ago. I do want our families to know that the very uh, popular Beyond the Bell Tutoring Homework Help Program will be starting up again on August 29th for elementary, middle, and high school students. We'll be sending home more information to families about the free after school service in the next few days. So parents, please be on the lookout for that. We're also working again with the Alachua County Health Department to provide free flu mist immunizations to students at school during the school day, which we've done in the past, as you know. For more uh, than a decade, we've been able to offer this benefit to our students and to their families to help protect them and their family members from the flu. More information about this is also gonna be shared with parents in the next week or so. The window for local schools to start administering the state's new FAST progress monitoring program will start next Monday, that's August 22nd, so your students may be coming home talking about the FAST progress monitoring assessments that they're taking. Schools are required to give the new test to students on or before September 30th, so we will start on August 22nd. We've also sent parents information about FAST and schools will be following up with additional information soon. And then uh, lastly, but not leastly, I'm, I'm sorry to share uh, that we've lost one of our employees. We lost uh, Terry Brown. Mr. Terry Brown uh, passed away last Wednesday. He was the lead custodian at Meadowbrook, and he worked with Alachua County Public Schools for s at least 17 years. Certainly our thoughts, prayers, and condolences go out to the family to his friends, to his co-workers. He had family that worked here in the school district. Uh, I did call his mother last week, Mrs. Brown, and had a conversation with her and, and definitely shared um, our condolences on behalf of the school board and the school district. So um, 
I just wanted to recognize Mr. Brown's contribution to our students and our schools here in Alachua County and the service that he provided all of our students. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Superintendent Andrew. Do we have any um, further um, comments or um, huh? announcements by board members? Well, I didn't see your light here, but Dr. Paulson. Yeah, the, I hope I'm going to jinx you, Mr. Andrew, when I say this, but I'm impressed by the calm I see in our school district since you've taken over. And it's, now, if I, if I jinx you, don't come after me. But it's, I, 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 it's just it's very uh, evident. So, and that's important. We needed that after we've been through. So I just thought I'd say that to you. And I don't give compliments all the time, so I want to tell you that. Okay, uh, thank you. Do we have any further uh, announcements or comments from board members? Okay, seeing none, um, uh, I'm going to turn the microphone back to Superintendent Andrew for an administrative appointment. Thank you, Chairman Hyatt. We have one administrative appointment this evening. I'd like to call Ms. Kathy Black up to the podium. So Ms. Black, as I can tell, she started off as an ESE teacher, I believe in 1974 in Sarasota County, and then moved on and was teaching, uh, started in 75, to 85 at Pinellas County Public Schools as an ESE teacher as well as a teacher on special assignment. Uh, she joined our team here in August of 1985 as an ESE teacher. Um, and I believe it was August of 1991, she was our supervisor of gifted and elementary ESE programs. In August of 1998, she took on the duties of the Director of Student and Community Services here in our public school system. In August of 2004, she uh, assumed the duty of Executive Director of ESE Student Services until June of 2017. And then Ms. Black served as a Supervisor Two of Curriculum from August 17th to June of 2001. She also served as a hearing officer for employee cases during that time period. She comes to us with 23 years of experience as an administrator, including those 13 years I mentioned as the Executive Director of ESE and Student Services. She served multiple roles, um, and her only gap in employment here with the school district was the 2021-2022 school year. Uh, she's certified, I believe, in multiple ESE areas like specific learning disabilities, emotionally handicapped, varying exceptionalities, mentally handicapped, and um, I wanted to bring her forward uh, to the school board. The superintendent recommends that the school board approved the appointment of Ms. Kathy Black as the Executive Director of Exceptional Student Education and Student Support Services as presented. Uh, moved by Dr. Paulson. Second. Seconded by Ms. Russell. Any discussion? I'd like to jump into her. You know, I think I went over this. It took a lot of it before I had her, Mr. Andrew. And back in 1985, I mean, she, she's, she has worked for 11 superintendents, 11. Doug, uh, Doug McGann back in 1985, right? And then you had Linda Eldridge. Not many people remember that. That was 91. And then Bob Hughes of the 90s. And Lawrence Maraza. I think we were together on the leadership team, weren't we? Yeah. Uh, Mary Chambers, and then uh, Dan Boyd, and uh, Herschel Lyons. I think you were going to leave, and Owen Roberts got uh, got appointed. And I, Owen, I know he came to me. I don't know about the other board members, and said, "I got to have her." Mm -hmm. And he talked you into staying. Yes, he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, Owen Roberts, then Sandy Hollinger, Karen Clark. 
Carly Simon, I do for a year. You work for her as an administrator. And uh, so it was, that's, that's it. I mean, if I said that, I mean, that's a lot of, a lot of administration, lady. And you always have been a very soothing in, influence on our school district. And I'm, I'm glad Robert came and said he had to have you when you were getting ready to leave. So we can thank him for us still having you. So um, I don't think I let anybody out. I think that's, all. that's a lot of superintendents. Yeah. The only appointed superintendent you didn't work for was Jim Longstreet, but he knew you. I can tell you that because he was my advisor. So he, told, he spoke very highly of you. Thank you. So that's it. Okay, thank you, Dr. Paulson. Um, do I have any other comments? I have highlights on the oh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Certain. Thank you. A lot of it depends on perspective. When I was elected, I said to my colleagues at that time that folks in my community all had felt, I can't speak for 100% of the folks in my community, but folks in my community have felt that this district, there's little trust and that our students, the majority of them are not served well. So there's a calmness over it if the system works for you, but if the system has its foot on your neck, Ain't no calmness about it at all. Um, the superintendent can make the recommendation and it will likely pass, but the dissension was sown way before this day. And um, I just hope with the reappointment that you come and you serve all students, that you mean well and you do right and you have a pure heart and you follow the laws the federal laws, the state laws, and board policies, and you apply them equitably and equally to every student and every family. Because children of color that are ESC students haven't always been served well. They, and more likely than not, and than not, they aren't served well. A lot of them don't know how to work the system to file complaints, as, as some do, to be able to be served well. But it was said by some that there's been a lot of talk and our students aren't doing well. Well, we have a lot of people, we just was just told that this, this person before us has served 11 superintendents in a lot of years. And the students that look like me have not done well for a lot of years and a lot of them are ESC, have ESC, um, that label on them, or they qualify for ESC services. So consider your ways and please come forth with good policies and implementations that serve all of our students and serve them well. Thank you. Dr. McNeely. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. To Mrs. Black, welcome back. We started out a long time ago at Duval Elementary, and that Kathy Black, I want to see back here now. Uh, we are appreciative of you even coming out of retirement. I know that there are many people I have asked to return, and they say either are you crazy or laugh at me, but you did not do that when the superintendent asked for you to be reinstated. I'm expecting great things, as the former, uh, my colleague just stated, wonderful things. As of yesterday, I got a long call from a parent, so I will be turning that over to your department. I know you will handle it with efficacy, but here we are all over again. I wish you well. I wish you speed with unifying this district because that's what we need, unity, and I expect that to happen because you're in the leadership seat. With that, welcome back. Okay, any further comments? Um, okay, all in favor? Um, I'm sorry, I, I don't have your light. Uh, Doc, did, you remind me something. I've, I've already seen this, the, the ESE department needed your calmness and your leadership. And you can see the difference. And I appreciate that. I know, every, I know the people in the ESC department appreciate it too because I've heard them say it. All right, thank you. Okay, any far, further comments? 
Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Oh, no, on the podium. Um, I said on the podium. Okay. Um, I didn't hear what. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, He's opposing. Uh, Mr. Delaney, do you have, um, is, is, is there a, uh, any, any kind of a um, comment uh, that you would have uh, as far as the board's obligation to accept uh, the superintendent's appointments? Uh, what I would say is under our policies, if someone steps forward and, and wishes to provide public comment on an issue that's being voted on by the board, that, that's welcome, that's permitted. Uh, on an administrative point, appointment like this, there could be public comment and we would typically follow our usual procedures for that in terms of notifying the chair. I, I was asking specifically about, uh, about voting by the board. Uh, sure, sure, and so the issue there is it turns on the issue of good cause. I think it's a moot point given that the vote was in favor of the adoption of uh, the adoption of the superintendent's recommendation. Okay. Now, I, um, uh, you know, I, 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 we don't need to have, we, we don't need to have outbursts. Uh, the, the, um, uh, this is a little bit unusual, but because uh, normally these are very much uh, uh, ministerial sort of situations. But if, um, if we have um, a um, member of the public that would like to speak to this, uh, you may go to the microphone. You have three minutes with the board. I'm Shanae Jackson, and I'm gonna be the member of the public that speaks on this, because I'm one of the well-versed members of the public that deals with this. So I'm one of the people that they have to call in when they need to call in back up because of our students not being served well. And I don't just mean our black students, but I mean our ESC students in general. Our equity gap, our whatever we want to call it and make it our opportunity gap, achievement gap, has been this way for the last 10 years. She's been here for the last 11. I've been part of the people that have done the public records request to know and understand. I don't know what ESC people you state are happy to have her back, but that's a bold-faced lie. I don't know what parents you state are happy to have her back. And we're not just talking about how we feel. We're looking at the actual data and the disarray that we have as it relates to ESC. And many of you are very aware of all of the emails that I get looped into about how our ESC students are actually not being served, how the procedure of safeguards are actually not being followed, and then also when it comes to documentation that has to be fixed and doctored up so that we would not be sued as a school district. So we know that it's a moot point and at this juncture, you all are gonna do what you wanna do, but I wanna make sure, as I've done before, that we put it on record, so then when we have to go forward, face it, and I go back and I state that I told you so. Even as it pertains to the new superintendent, and he's somebody that I like and respect, I've been very disappointed, because yet and still, we keep forgetting about the families that are most impacted, we keep saying all the right things, but we absolutely keep doing the opposite. And to keep bringing back the same people who are gonna keep up this good old boy system, that does not serve serve our students, that does not serve our parents, and that does not serve our district employees, and you are the largest employer here in the actual county. So I'm not just speaking for the students that are not being served, I'm speaking for the employees, but then also the parents. And then you all wonder why we don't trust you, we all wonder why we won't come to the table when literally you all are creating a system for us not to come to the table and not to trust it. And I'm going to be bold and I'm going to be brash because the fact that I'm still sitting in meetings with ESC families weekly, two to three, and I'm donating my time, and you all are being paid top dollar to not, not your school board members, but everybody else, being paid top dollar to not serve our students and our employees well, it is so disheartening and it is so disappointing. Okay, do we have any phone calls on this issue? Okay. Not on this issue. Do I have anyone else um, in the auditorium? Okay. Uh, so, um, do I have, we're, we're going to go back to the vote because I know we had a vote, but that I, I think to be official, we needed to have the public comment uh, prior to that. So, uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, motion passes 
four to one, uh, with uh, Ms. Certain voting uh, no and, and the other board members voting yes. Uh, did, uh, did, did you have any comments you'd like to make, uh, Ms. Black? No, I'd just like to say that I thank you for this opportunity. I am committed to all of our students, have been, and Dr. McNeely and I shared a room at one time. She knows, and I know each other, and I've heard your comments, Ms. Certain, and I am taking them to heart. So do understand that I'm here to work on behalf of our children with disabilities, all of our children and their families. They have been in my heart. They have been what I've advocated for for 47 years, and I'm grateful to have this opportunity to one last time work in the school district. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, next we have time for, we have 15 minutes for citizen input, and all of these comments are to be about items that are not on tonight's agenda. Anything on the agenda would come during that time. Uh, so I um, want to remind everybody you have three minutes. At three minutes, your time will end. Uh, and um, so probably we'll have five um, speakers right now unless, um, unless somebody is particularly sh short in, on their time. Uh, and then uh, we have... Uh, at the end of the meeting, we have another opportunity where, where we're not going to um, say 15 minutes. We're going to be here as long as we need to be here. So um, I, I do want to remind everybody that uh, we're, we're to talk about uh, issues, and there are plenty of issues to talk about. Uh, we're not going to be... Uh, having any uh, personal attacks accepted uh, from two employees or, uh, or anyone else in the building. Uh, so the, our, our, our first speaker, uh, three minutes with the board, is uh, once again, Ms. Jackson. actually didn't expect to go first, but that's fine. I am here as a member of Eastside High School's Alumni's Band, and I'm here to present. I sent you all an email today letting you know that we had started a petition at when I shared the petition last night, with less than 24 hours, we already have more than 300 signatures. The reason for that petition is we have been advocating um, at the helm of Ms. Kathy Norman for the last six years to try and get a more collaborative and a more culturally responsive band program in order to be able to serve our black students. We, this year, have met six times. We have a band director that is unwilling to work with us in the community and with the public, which is not a far cry from our district, as we can see. The only point that I want to go ahead and make before other people come up here is, number one, to give you all a term, and the experts should know it, which is cultural responsive pedagogy. And I want to explain that for people that are here that are unaware. That is a student-centered approach to teaching in which a student's unique cultural strengths are identified and nurtured to promote student achievement and a sense of well-being about the student's cultural place in the world. The reason that I am centering that is because the actual research, and I don't know why I know more research than the people who are being paid, but it's frustrating to me, states that it is clear that when black students participate in music education programs they do, they, that do not validate their cultural backgrounds, they feel rejected, devalued, exposed, and judged. And that's how our black students feel in every realm. But the fact that we understand that much of the funding that goes to Eastside High School already goes to the IB program, and then through one meal, and then they turn around and get more funding because they participate in band programs that black students don't. The fact that with each excuse that the band director gave, 
we gave a solution. And the ask is so simple. All we're asking is to return to the way things were when I went to Eastside. You have your competition routine, and then you have an additional performance that's just added to it that you do during halftime at the parade, and then you do more culture. Also, the beginning band program, it should speak to black children. The fact that my daughter attended Old Call for four years and they got it, I do not understand how the high school with the highest demographic of black students does not get it and does not understand it. I do want to be clear, and as I was clear over the last year we've been meeting, we can do this the easy way and work together, or we can do it the hard way. And if I need to send out a text message to only 25,000 people in my database to increase the numbers on that petition, I'm more than happy to do that. We should not have to always fight when it comes to advocating for black children. So the same way that IB parents feel they're entitled to advocate for their children, we as a community are showing up. A very diverse group of community members that have that same sense of entitlement. One should not have to preclude or exclude the other. Okay. Uh, next, uh, Dana Self Powers. Yes. Um, hi. I'd like to speak also on the band at Eastside High School. I was in band at Eastside from 74 to 78. My sister was in the band, the first graduating class of Eastside, 1973. To say that 2022, that the band is made up of mostly white children is disturbing to me because back in the day when a part of black children were not being served because I was there during the integration, Mr. Parker brought us all together and we played the music of the day. And I must say, I was taught under Mr. Jerry C. Miller, so I had a wonderful start at Howard Bishop. When I became, when I went to Eastside, we learned as a united group of black and white children together, and we made superiors. Contrary to what People want to say that we were fun and entertainment. We performed. We worked hard, just as hard as the football players during practice, to learn the routines and to march and to dance. We memorized our music. We also made straight superiors in marching. It's different than the competition that they do now, but we made straight superiors. We also made straight superiors during concert so we could play. I myself made straight ones and have medals to show for it, doing solo and ensemble, so we could play. I'm just expressing this, that east side, and I still live on the east side of town, it needs to reflect what the community around it is. My son graduated from IB in 2006, so I'm aware how IB parents feel. We're not saying get rid of Mr. Hughes. He's a former Ram. But we are saying, add back something that will bring excitement to that school and to want other cultures to join and be a part of. It helps with relationships with one another down, the, down through the years. And I would not have had that opportunity if the band was not integrated which is what the band needs to be now, integrated. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is um, Reverend Alonzo Young. Hi, school board commissioners. I am Chaplain Alonzo Young. I am one of the first senior class to graduate from Eastside High School, class of 1973, and one of the first members of Eastside Band. Yes, I bleed orange and green. I take pride of our Eastside High School Band culture and tradition that was established during Eastside High School beginning under Mr. Richard Parker that kept me from going to prison of being dead, and which later I became a clinical chaplain. Today, I still play my trumpet that make uh, me happy. I still play the trumpet that Mr. Parker uh, taught me. I play it in the chapel services, church services, 
and I have recorded two CDs. The foundation was laid, laid by Mr. Parker. Eastside High School Band was the melting pot for, for all races. We learned how to play instruments and read musical notes during concert and marching season. We played the latest songs, jamming, getting down, and dancing that united all races. And this became the soul of Eastside. Eastside High School Band stood out and was different from other high school bands in the Gainesville area. After performing the band uh, competition, we ranked superior. I would like for you to return the soul back to Eastside High School Band. The community enjoyed Eastside Band during the 70s through the 90s. Also, the community will, 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 uh, would follow us and dance with us during the university homecoming parades on University Avenue. For those of you that are unaware, Eastside Band tradition and culture program has been removed. The foundation that was laid by Mr. Parker has been broken and destroyed. We are not, tr we are not uh, trying to take away what that has been accomplished, but to be sensitive, inclusive, diverse, and to consider the community for which it served. The administrators presented the alumni band with a proposal that did not reflect the restoring of our rich tradition, which was unacceptable. We miss the tradition. We miss our culture. Yes, our community do as well. The dancing, the high marching, the playing, the latest, the latest hit, kids learning to play instruments and learning how to read musical notes to, to better themselves within our society. We need the kids in our community to stop killing one another by picking up instruments and laying down uh, their guns. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have 40 minutes are up, thank you. Um, Kenneth Johnson. Kenneth Johnson. My name is Chad Kenneth Johnson. Um, I'm a member of class of 97. At Eastside Ram, I was a football player during my era at Eastside High School. And today I'm standing solidarity in support of the band because ever since I was seven years old, it was the band that drew me to go to Eastside when other opportunities was go to GHS and B-Hopes, but it was just the, the, the spirit of the band that drew me to Eastside. And, and it was the spirit of the band that kept me there um, during my era. Um, during halftime that I can remember that even though we tied and we're going through, but we get to peep at the band and it gives you that second win, you know, and that's what's lacking from my kids. It kind of affected the football program, not just on the field, but also to draw funds to be able to help restore the, the football program. And I just want to give you all the insight about the violence as a community leader that have been taken. I know the data speak at Eastside, but outside of Eastside that I'm very concerned about that most kids can't play sports. So now that they can't play sports, they turn to gang activities. And gangs are at an all time worse on the east side of town. There's more gangs at east side than in, in this other school because they have nowhere to go. So I'm telling the board and the members, either we gonna pay now or pay later. It's however y'all wanna do it. But the, what's going on right now on the streets is gonna continue to happen until we start getting more opportunity for the kids to gain scholarships and then make it out the school system. And uh, I just hope that I thought music was supposed to bring us together. You know, Miss Dana, Jill, I, I call her auntie. I call her sister. You know, it's, it's one happy family, you know. It's, it's a culture that draws us all together, you know. It's not a racist thing. It's more of something that brings us in unity, you know. I'm not coming to bash Mr. Hughes. Or he's a part of Ram. You know, it kind of got me more divided as a football player, but I do understand that that culture is missed, and we really need that back in our community, you know. And I just hope that some way, somehow, that you guys have compassion towards the other side. You know, I know the IB and what they brought and what Miss Hughes, the rewards and all that, but it's the culture, the lives that we use, we losing because we're not having that other opportunity for the kids to be part of something that they love. So I'm just asking that y'all just consider that 
not just unity like it's about unity, you know, all, because East I need that. And this is the worst that I have seen in my school in many years, in the last 10 years, with the, sh the violence and violence and violence. They're leading the shooting and killing outside the school system. So I'm asking y'all, please put all that in consideration. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, uh, Jill Dumas. Hi, I'm Jill Dumas. I am a lifelong resident of the east side of Gainesville. I grew up here in the northeast. I went to Alachua County Schools, Metcalf, Bishop, and east side. I graduated in 1995, and one of the things I remember about my childhood was watching the east side band and all knowing that we were going to go there one day and we were going to have an opportunity to be part of something that was so important to our community. And I did that. And I went on from East Side to UF where I was also in the band there. And my experience in the band and the relationships and the sense of belonging that happened there were part of the things, or was the main thing really that propelled me throughout my life and kept me out of a lot of the trouble that has been mentioned here that creeps up when kids don't have things to do or when they don't feel like they're connected or part of something greater than themselves. And that is something that I have seen over the past 30 years deteriorate substantially over and over. And every time I think that something's changing about it or we get a little bit of tradition back, I see it pulled, pulled out again. Um, I've heard a lot of talk recently about validity and educational value that goes along with people's attitudes towards the traditional HBCU marching style, um, that it's not educational enough, which to me sounds inherently racist, and I hope that that's not the case, but it's hard to understand or see anything beyond that when those are the words that are being used, that things have to have educational value and the argument is for classical or things that are not part of the popular culture. The popular culture seems to be thought of as not quite enough. That's something we can do for fun, not something that we can do that's educational. And Mr. Parker did not do that. I did not have Mr. Parker. I actually had the band director that came after him. But I was lucky and blessed enough to have a lot of upperclassmen that did and that brought those traditions. And those traditions were something that created a community that I see dissolving before my very eyes. I still live just a few blocks away and am integrally involved in all of this. My parents ran the furniture store down here, down the, down the street, Dumas Furniture, that you all know if you've been here for <laughs> any amount of time. I'm very invested in my community and I'm very invested in this band and what it's done for me and the rest of the people in this community. And I think that we deserve to have a stake in our own organization. Okay, thank you. We're, um, we're gonna have time for one more speaker now, and then, like I said, the, we'll, we'll have that pretty open-ended at the end of the meeting. Uh, so, um, and we'll also have, we'll have some phone calls after uh, toward the end of the meeting as well. Um, if you would like to speak, and I know we have some folks here that are uh, at a meeting for the first time, uh, if, if you would please, on the table right outside, uh, get a uh, form to fill out, and if you can turn it in right at that table, and then it'll get to me, and I'm, I'm addressing these in the order that I received them. They're all numbered, so if if you if you do want to speak, we'd love to hear you, and uh, please, uh, sometime between now and the next time for public speaking, and it shouldn't be terribly long. We'll see. Never know. Uh, so our last speaker right now is Kathy Norman.
coordinator of the Richard A. Parker Alumni Band. I'm also the coordinator for the Eastside High School Alumni Association. This is really emotional for me. I never wanted this to get this far, never. If there are any IB students here, if there are any IB parents here, I want you all to know, and this is emotion again, that we never wanted this to happen like this. We love you students. We love doing anything possible for you all. We love being with you all. We love performing with you all. All we wanted and all that we asked is that you add a piece of the tradition at the end of the show. That's it. If anyone has said anything else, it was not true. I've worked in this district for 34 plus years. I retired on last year, but I would never, ever try to do anything to hurt any student. And some of the things that I was hearing to say that we said, it's upsetting. It's really upsetting. And to be a part of this district, you don't do it for the money. You do it because you love kids, because otherwise the, the money is just really not good. But you do it for the love of students. And we love those kids. And I've said time and time to Mr. Hughes, I say we love your students. All we're wanting, all that we're wanting is just for you to add just a little piece of the tradition at the end of your show. That is it. That is all. So if any of your IB students are any of your IB students, I just want you, I'm turn away for a minute. I just want you all to know that we do care about you all. And if anyone has said anything, okay, if anyone has said anything to you all again, it's not true. It's not true. And I just wanted you all to know that. And I want the parents to know that as well. Thank you. At this point, um, you go to the superintendent for um, the consent agenda. Chairman Hyatt, the superintendent recommends that the school board approve the consent agenda as described in items two through 18. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Certain, seconded by Dr. McNeely. Do I have any discussion? I have one comment. Yes, ma'am. Um, that's not a question, but I do have a comment. I did note in the item number five, the mental health assistance um, allocation plan, I was pleased to see that our compliance increased significantly. Um, I think that was probably or mostly due to the stipend, the the funding that was um, provided, but this is a requirement that um, employees of the district have to, to do, and we're fortunate that we had the ESSER funds that allowed us to incentivize um, completion of this course. And so we went from, I think, probably 25 or 30 percent um, completion district-wide to right at 80 percent. Elementary is up to eight, 76, middle 75 percent, and high school 81, and the district staff 85 percent for an overall um, completion rate by staff of 81 percent. So I'm hoping that we will keep this going and we will get to that um, 100 percent compliance. And the reason that I'm bringing this out is when we received our audit from the Auditor General's office, this has been a point that we've been written up about because this, we haven't had a significant number of our employees to have um, completed this training. And I think I've seen that noted in two past audit reports. So um, this is something I'm really glad that we had the ESSA funding to be able to do that and, and we won't have that in the future. So I'm hoping compliance will, um, will continue to stay high. So I'm, I'm glad to see that. I was glad to read that when I was reviewing my, my materials for tonight's meeting. Thank you. Okay, uh, and Ms. Russell. Thank you. Um, I just had a question about um, item number 14, and I did speak uh, to Ms. Steptoe before the meeting, 
and she has told me that the backup materials are not uh, ready yet and we will get that information. My main question was about funding and I, I think at the time when we, when we receive all the information we need about this that we just might want to mention the funding and where it's coming from um, regarding this program. I don't have a question about the program, but I just think we all need to see the information and understand it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Mr. Hyde. I did have one question. On item number 18, I see that we have the, the initial agenda item that we had in had um, interpreter services, but when we got our materials yesterday in executive session, it had sign language. So my question was, I'm glad that we have the interpreter services, but I'm wondering um, if, if staff could tell me where we are with the language interpretation, because I've gotten um, been stopped by someone who works with the Rural Women's Health um, Coalition, I think it is, and she had some questions about the district not providing adequate interpreter services. So does anyone have any update on something of that nature? Yeah. Uh, Superintendent Dancha, did you? I think you. Oh, okay. Go, I'm sorry. Uh, we do have the uh, language line services on the, uh, should be on the consent agenda tonight. Um, it was my understanding that it was going to be on there tonight, so I will have to check with our uh, purchasing folks to find out because that was my understanding that was on the agenda tonight. Uh, we also have uh, advertised for the interpreter position. Um, obviously, in addition to providing interpreting services, they will be coordinating these, uh, the use of the language line. We have already talked with the language line staff about conducting training for uh, folks at the schools and at the district level so that they know how to access those services. And um, we have also advertised the full-time position and we are hoping to be conducting interviews next week and filling that position um, within the next couple of weeks as well. So I apologize. My understanding was that was supposed to be on tonight's agenda, so I'll have to double check on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Horton, thank you. Okay, um, any other comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Uh, now, as promised, we are back to citizen input. And the next speaker will be Suzanne Wynn. You have three minutes with the board. Good evening, Chair and board members and Superintendent Andrew. I'm here tonight speaking as a parent of a child that is in the East Side Band. My daughter has been in the band. This is her fourth year. Um, uh, one thing I, that really struck me tonight was representing the East Side Band as IB students and not diverse at the same time in my opinion, discounts the membership of our black and brown students in band and the IB program. That's really baffling to me. I would think that you would want to acknowledge those students. So I, I, I'm, I'm trying to stay calm. Um, I have seen through the years Mr. Hughes and all of the students in the East Side Band work extremely hard. I have seen all the students love Mr. Hughes. The band is diverse. I don't believe the, the students see color the way that adults and senior citizens do. I have seen those kids working together, sweating together, singing together, dancing together, and I think it's beautiful. I would love to invite you to go see their, their practices and how hard they work. They practice on Tuesdays and Thursdays till 5 p.m. They were in band camp for two and a half weeks from eight to five in the summer heat. I would love to invite you to go to a game and see them perform and see the band in, at their finest, see the folks in the stands singing along, dancing, having a good time. One thing that I'd like to point out 
is my daughter had the opportunity to start piano at age three. She was in a school that she learned recorder starting in first grade that helped improve her manual dexterity. She was exposed to music all through school. She, she had a love of music, and I feel like one thing that would really help with membership of any student in high school bands is supporting children starting in kindergarten all the way through grade eight. So uh, I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me, and I, I really hope that we would focus on the positives. Um, Last year, the Eastside Band received the Florida Band Masters Association Otto J. Uh, Crash Hour Award. Thank you. <laughs> That's straight superior ratings for marching MPAs, concert MPAs, and state MPAs. They were the only band in Alachua County to receive this award. Uh, Ms. Wynn, year. it's three minutes. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Next. Um, Marianne Armstrong. Hi, um, I'm Marianne. I'm actually drum major of Eastside Band this year. Um, I'm here with Deshaun, he's behind me. Um, he's drum major with me this year. Um, when I heard about what was kind of going on, I wanted to be able to speak um, for the students at Eastside. Um, I'm a senior this year, it's so my fourth year in band. Um, I just want to say I love it, first of all. Um, Eastside Band is the reason I came to Eastside. Um, I believe I'm zoned GHS, so I'm in the IB program, which is kind of what you guys were talking about before. I came to Open House in, uh, January before my freshman year. Uh, I had no plan on coming to Eastside at all. But the band came in, they filed in the seats. If you've ever come to Open House at Eastside, they file in, they play. They play Vice Versa, which is a song FAMU and Bethune Cookman play, I believe. Um, Let's Go, Wrong Idea, Ram Jam. Um, songs I love to play now. I remember sitting in a seat in the auditorium as an eighth grader being like, I want to do that. I want to be a part of that. And here I am. I got to be drum major this year. I get to dance on the stage just like I saw people do when I was in eighth grade. And it's a wonderful thing. Um, Ms. Wynn was talking about um, how we worked together over the summer to build what kind of what we're going to do this year. Our leadership team got together this year over the summer and talked about what we think of the Eastside Band, like what do we believe that it stands for. We kind of summed it up in four words. This was the leadership team, no involvement from adults. It was just, there were 14 of us students together, sophomores, juniors, and um, seniors. And the four words that we came up with were hype, family, accountability, and tradition. Those were the four things that we think that Eastside Band stands for. And I think that that kind of attests to what everybody, hopefully, believes that Eastside Band stands for. I think that everybody cares about those things. And then it's something that I hope to implement, keep implementing. I hope I think Deshaun would agree with me. I know in terms of like, if it were up to me, every single student at Eastside would be a part of the band. I think it's one of the most wonderful things about Eastside. I want to build a culture in band. I want more people in it. I know that when Mr. Hughes arrived at Eastside, there were 12 kids in the band. And now this year we have 84, I believe. Um, so as much as I want more than that, of course, I want it to be more, um, not just IB because I want it to be everybody. I want everybody in band. And I'm, I'm gonna try to do that as much as I can. I know that this year um, we're, we have a beginning band. There are 17 students enrolled right now. I'm going to meet them this week. I'm super excited about it. Can't wait for them to join the marching band next year once they know how to play their instruments. I know that we have some brand new kids in band this year who have never played an instrument before. They're marching with us on the field. I also know that the problem doesn't necessarily start in high school. Some of these kids, you can't join marching band as a ninth grader if, you don't, if you've never read music before. So we're taking our band this year to elementary schools to get kids started in sixth grade. I've talked to Mr. Hughes about it. We're starting it this year. We're taking our band to go perform for them, get them involved in the sixth grade as soon as possible so we can you know, get them involved early. We want them in the East Side Band. We want to grow our band as much as possible in any way that we can. And I know I'm going to do that as much as I can too. Thank you. Very much. That's three minutes. We're, we're going to go ahead and take a phone call, and then the next person at the microphone will be Deshaun Johnson, but first we'll take a, a phone call. Caller, please state your name. You have three minutes of the board. Yes, my name is James Ham. I'm an East Side class of 1978 graduate and band member. The reason for my call is I wanted to give input 
for the East Side High School Marching Band to have any history, replace awards, certificates, pictures put back into the band room, and a special article made by our community that we're working together as a team to go forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next will be Deshaun Johnson. I'm Deshaun Johnson. Um, along with my friend Marion behind me, I'm also a drum major this year at Eastside High School. Um, sorry if I stumble over my words. I've never really been good at public speaking. So, um, more than anything else, one thing that Eastside High School Band has made me appreciate, made me love, is the family dynamic that we have in the band. Um, I hear a lot of talk about the band being mostly IB kids, mostly white kids, and you know, there's a lot of kids in the band. We come from different backgrounds. We come from different cultures, and I think that's something that we should um, focus on more than things that set us different. Um, I really want to focus on bringing that family together, making sure that we all have love for each other. Um, for the past four years, Eastside High School Band has been the thing that has probably kept me on my feet. Um, sorry, I'm trying to not get choked up by it. It's, some, it's something I love, it's something I adore. If I didn't do Eastside High School Band, I don't know where I would be right now. Um, as for the alumni band, I'm very thankful for the path that you guys have made for us, um, especially for being an African American myself. I know that there's a lot of people like myself um, that don't have quite these opportunities and I'm thankful for Mr. Richard E. Parker for making that uh, opportunity possible. But more than anything else, um, I hope that you can join us in loving and supporting us for not only my school year, but the school year for the people that come after me. Um, Mr. Joseph Hughes, he's been one of my greatest inspirations. I don't know where I would be without him and without his leadership that he's given me. Um, when I came out of middle school band, I didn't think that I was gonna continue band, but seeing the whole band play vice versa and Ram Jam and seeing um, that family come around me and just build me up and encourage me, hey, you should do this band and you should join this and be a part of our family, that, um, that really touched me. So that was really important. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that we hope that everyone in our community can help build our band and help um, support us as we go through not only my year, but the years after us and not try and divide us. Um, I know you guys are not trying to divide us. I don't wanna put words in your mouth, but um, we just hope that you can love and support us as we love and support you guys. We love playing with the alumni band. We love watching old clips of our um, East Side High School alumni play their music and we love the traditions. We cherish those traditions. Trust me, we do. We love them. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, and we'll take the next phone call. Caller, please state your name. You have three minutes. Caller, please state your name. You have three minutes on the board. Hi, my name is Tina Days, and um, I just want to say that uh, I need to give kudos to a. Um, board member who was viciously attacked on Facebook for taking a vacation. You deserve that vacation and you you Paula on vacation and still think about all the kids and what you need to do. So anyone who went against you and spoke about you being on vacation, shame on y'all. And then the next thing is I was one of the parents who protested outside before the school board meeting, because I do have a daughter that goes to East Side that do is part of the IB program. So that lady that, that came up there and said that she said that uh, a lot of people are not uh, giving the credit to the blacks that um, is in the IB program. I do have a daughter that's in the IB program, and I still protest. I'm protesting because take a poll of how many kids that's in the band that's not IB. It is about IB. It's an IB band. It's not inclusive. And a lot of, a lot of, and we want to be honest. You know why it's not more inclusive? I'm a single parent, and I don't have the finances to be able to put a child on the band. Have anybody thought about they may parents may want to put kids on the band but can't afford it? Why can't we not address the financial issue of being in band, and why there's not a lot of uh, uh, representation of different kids in the band because it costs too, cost too much. 
It's not about the kids that don't want to participate. The parents can't afford it. So why why won't we have an outreach program in order to help students that want to participate in them but can't afford it to uh, lessen the cost and maybe need to be on income? So. I'm going to protest because I see the band needs to be more inclusive and not just I be. Thank you. Okay, next uh, is uh, Crystal Welcome. Is Crystal Welcome here? No? Then we'll go to um, Anthony Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm Anthony Johnson, and I was not in the East Side then, but I'm a, am an, an East Side alumni. And my friend, my classmate, Dr. Young, contacted me about this issue, and I know what band meant to him. I mean, when we were there during his time, his tenure in the band, the brand was the band was a brotherhood. And Mr. Parker kept it that way. He made sure that it was. And one of the reasons why it was such a good brotherhood is because he relied on the students to tell him what did they want to do? What do, what do y'all want to play? Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on with the, today's Eastside band. Like I say, I'm late to this. I've heard some things, but I just wanted to get some clarity. Hopefully, maybe that you can uh, look into some of the complaints that are being lodged against the band right now. Uh, I know the culture changes. If it's changing organically, then that's fine. I mean, you can't, you can't stop that. But if there are superficial changes taking place where you're, making, you're, 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 you're changing the culture in a way that some students can't participate, then I think that's wrong, and so that's something I would, I would like for the, the the board to look into at least, examine that, and make sure that's not happening. I don't, I'm not saying that's happening, but uh, I've heard some of the testimonies here from the current students. They seem to be uh, not being. They seem to be happy with the role they're playing in the band. So I mean, again, but I don't I don't know. But but the IB piece, where you have to be an IB only in order to participate in the band. I think that probably shouldn't be, because that will limit uh, a segment of the, the student body. And we know that. So if this is, if it's just, like I said, if it's just an organic change uh, that's taking place, then fine. But if it's something that uh, uh, someone's trying to change the culture or have, uh, you know, uh, motives that that goes against the desires of the student body, then that's, that should be something that the board should be interested in, and, uh, and, and, and maybe this, 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 this item need to be revisited again, and maybe the band director can talk and give his opinion on what's going on with the band. There's more information out there now, because from what I've heard so far, I have very little to go on, but, uh, but I think it's an issue that's important. I mean, it's a cultural issue, issue that uh, I would hope that the board as a body would be interested in finding, you know, taking a closer look at it just to make sure that everything is kosher, so to speak. That's all. And I'm Anthony Johnson, and I am running for county commission district. Okay. Thank you very much. That was perfect timing on that last thing. That was great. Okay. Um, uh, let's go back to the phones, please. Caller, please state your name. You have three minutes with the board. Yes. Hi. Thank you, and good evening, board members. Uh, my name is Brigitte Stevens. I'm the class of 1985. And I just wanted to say um, how important it is to have the tradition of Eastside High School Band to continue. I was just waiting on the phone, thinking about what I was going to say to you all. And this popped in my head. When I was a little girl, I grew up in the projects, um, which is Kennedy, was Kennedy Homes, but it's um, no longer there. And it was a young lady that stayed by me. Um, her name was Sally Ann Demps. 
at the time, and she was in the, I think the first or second year that the school had opened up. And I just recall how my mother used to take her to um, band classes, get her to the, um, get on the bus and everything. And you know what, I was like, you know, hearing the band and and seeing all the things that they, they was doing, I couldn't wait to have my chance to be there. So for us as alumni, and especially alumni of color, this is something we have always looked forward to. And it also kept us stable. It kept us out of trouble. It kept us um, focused because if we didn't keep a good GPA, we couldn't participate in the band. So I just wanted to, to put my little two cent in and say, you board members need to do everything y'all can to work and try to keep the tradition of Eastside High School. We look forward to those things. And as alumni, we don't even come back that much because it's nothing to come back to. So if you had the traditions there, you would get more of the alumni to come and you'll get more productivity and more participation. And that's my three minutes for it, members. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kelly Kostuma. All right, thank you so much. Um, the drum majors from the Eastside Band covered a lot of what I wanted to cover, especially that the band was down to 20 students when Mr. Hughes took over. Um, and uh, he built the band back up. And, you know, today she was saying they have 85 students in the band. It is a very diverse band. Um, it's 31 black students, 32 white students, and 21 Asian students currently. Um, and they do a really good job. <laughs> the band is awesome. My son was in the band. It's a vertical family from when you first join it. Um, and it's an amazing experience. And I work at the school board and I want every kid to have that experience. But it is gonna take effort um, to make that happen. And, and it's gonna have to happen in elementary and middle school for these kids to be able to join the band um, when they come uh, to um, Eastside. The Eastside Band does do a really good job, I think, in the stands, um, and I know because I traveled with the band for four years, um, and we get comments, comments and compliments everywhere we go from the music that we play in the stands. I say we, I'm not a part of the band anymore, but when I was, we get compliments and comments everywhere we go because it is a fun band to watch in the stands. And yes, when I was in high school in 1984, the Buholtz Band also played a fun show on the field. <laughs> but it's changed over time, the way that the bands are judged. And so the way that they play um, on the field and practicing their show is a little different now. Um, but I do appreciate that they play those um, songs still and that the kids love it. And it's their favorite part about being in band is playing those. And I did want to just say something about the caller earlier who said that um, kids who can't afford it, can't participate. And yes, that is certainly a barrier to participation, but the band does have uh, fundraising that they do. They have instruments available for kids to play who would like to join the band. Um, and we do fundraise, the band does fundraise for fair share. And as an alumni parent, I still contribute um, to the fair share fund. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, our next phone call, please. Caller, please state your name. You have three minutes with the board. Thank you. My name is Kim Hampton. I'm an elementary school teacher here in the district. Um, this is my 25th year. And I first became aware of the story behind the East Side Band when I read Katie Heisen's very excellent piece of journalism. And I do want you to know that I signed the petition. I just wanted to let you know why. Um, I have seen over the past 20 years how standardized testing has harmed our students um, from the, the state testing, especially our black and brown students. Um, the tests are inherently biased against black and brown children, and I know how that has 
probably um, caused a lot of students not to be able to participate in extracurriculars, especially if we're worried about their F FCAT or FSA scores. Um, but I think it is very, very important as a parent and a grandparent that children have a sense of belonging, especially once they get to middle and high school, they have to belong to a group and feel like they're part of something great. That's one of the key things of keeping them in school. And so I just wanted to um, um, lend my support uh, to returning the band to its glory days. And I was a band kid, but I was from Marion County. But let me tell you that when um, the early 70s, when our school came up to march in the homecoming parade, we were envious of the East Side High School marching band. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Amy Barris. My name is Amy Barris. I'm the band director at Howard Bishop Middle School. And the problem starts right there. And it's not my fault, and it's not the parent's fault. It's not anybody's fault, one person or one entity. Every single kid that comes in my room belongs. Every single one of them. And every single band director in this district feels the same way. Every one of us. I can't tell you. I, I can't speak for my colleagues that are here. I can't speak for Mr. Hughes. But it takes several hundred, if not thousands of dollars, to put one instrument in the hands of kids. And I'm not saying that because the district is not supporting us. Because I think you're doing the best you can at this point in time financially. But I want the community to understand that we want nothing more than to have every child, black, brown, Asian, Hispanic, homosexual, heterosexual, whatever all of the other preferences are, every single one of them, Band is the one place where every child can belong. And I want those of us that are in the community that are, are, are trying, I don't know, what your, your frustrations, just like I'm showing my frustrations right now. It's not going to happen if we point fingers. It's going to happen if we get off our butts and work together. So for those people who feel it is too expensive, you are absolutely right. I gave brand new instruments that the district blessed us with with our new school last year to students, brand new. And when I got them back, they had some damage on them because they're middle school kids. It cost me over $700 before the school year even started to take care of those things so that my students got those instruments. And it's not the, the privileged kids, it's not the kids that, that, that their parents can afford to go to the music store to get those things. Those instruments are going into the hands of the families that can't afford to. And we have to do something as a community to make, write grants, to make donations, whatever it is that needs to be done. And once we get that accomplished, then maybe we can do something about traditions and things like that. But we can only teach the kids who choose currently to be in our classroom, and we need help getting the others that are not there to join. Ms. Barris, thank you. Thank you. Uh, can we go to the next phone call, please? Caller, please state your name. You have three minutes with the board. Thank you. My name is Stella Arduzer, and I have heard from alumni, current students, colleagues, parents, but it's time to hear from a former staff member of the East Side High School Ram Band because the voice of someone who did dedicated countless, countless hours is needed. I was the auxiliary instructor and associate director of bands for four band directors at Eastside High School in a five-year span of 2003 to 2008. Prior to that, I came from a glide step school and I also marched for the University of Florida marching band. 
One thing is for certain, tradition is not defined in just a show. What is so disheartening to me is that children are having to defend their craft to adults. Also, IB is an international program and it represents all. So it should not be used as something to, to, to validate segregation because that is not true. And we cannot continue to deny the students their experience as if what they love is wrong. I challenge Miss Norman, Kathy Norman, to go meet with that leadership team, the drum majors who I am so proud of right now because you are doing what drum majors are supposed to do and be the leader. I challenge you to meet with them, talk to the students because their experience is the East Side High School Ram Band way. They are continuing our tradition. They are continuing the love of music. And they are representing us with the utmost pride. As a former staff member, I am proud of what Joe Hughes has been able to do with restoring our program because it doesn't need to die. And he made sure it didn't. I know it's diverse because it's the East Side. And East Side is a special place. There's no place like it. Children, those who are there in the band, I am so proud of you because you came and you were the true representation of our East Side family through the years. And you drum majors, excellent job. Mark time, mark forward move because you all are, are on the right step. I'm so proud and go Rams. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have... Um... Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, uh, so we, that does conclude the callers. Uh, I just want to make that a very declarative statement. Uh, and um, uh, I have no more sheets here. Uh, and so uh, this is the last opportunity if anybody needed to speak. If, if, if not, um, I, 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 do, I do say that... Um, as one of five here, and we'll add the superintendent because he's been pretty busy with emails too. I appreciate all of the emails, uh, and and uh, that really helps us. Uh, and and I also w will say that um, we need people that care about our kids and that are support. The East Side Band and all of our band programs, uh, I, and I'm going to just say I'm going to go back um, a few years. In 1965, I was um, in the All State Junior High, not All State, please, All County. I was in the All State Orchestra later, but uh, All All County Junior High, and that's before we had a whole lot of money. And and in those days. Uh, you know, band directors did a better job with integration than most people did, and we and and the the group was um, uh, from all of our different schools, and um, and they were each con band director conducted one piece, and I remember Richard Parker, and this is from 1965, and he he was at Medbane at the time, uh, stepping up to the podium. And I can still see it, and I can still hear it, uh, conducting an arrangement of Handel's water music. Um, maybe some of you got to play that, but I got to play it in 1965. Uh, I also remember, um, um, uh, you know, just uh, my first time, I, I went to Gainesville High School. Go Gaines, thank you. Uh, don't don't boo me. Uh, but the first time I went to what we used to call band contest, now it's MPA, I remember um, the Mebane High School band, first time I'd seen them, first time I'd heard them, blew me away with uh, coming downfield. And I'm not talking about anything fancy-dancy. I'm talking about precision marching and a, a really, really good sound. So, and, and then as a band director, uh, I got to know, uh, I was a colleague for many years uh, with Mr. Parker. So uh, I, 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 I do have a deep appreciation, again, as a band director, 
for, for what he's done. And I also have a deep appreciation for Mr. Hughes. And I have a, uh, and, I, and, and I hope, I'm, I'm you know, I've, you know, if we were at church and, and Pastor Barris was up there speaking, I, I, I would have given a couple of amens because, you know, this is something uh, that we can all work together for all of these kids. And, and yes, the folks in this room, we're going to make, be maybe con, more concerned about East Side. Uh, but the, if you look at the entire community, we're going to be dealing with what, what do we need to do at Santa Fe? What do we need to do at, uh, at, at Gainesville High? What do we need to do uh, at all of our high schools? So at Hoth, we, we don't have a band at Hawthorne. What are we going to do about that? We need to do something about it. So um, there, there's a lot we can do. I, I appreciate the, the passion. Uh, I also uh, want you to know, again, just uh, a, a lot of the fact that, that I was conducted in, in 1965 by Mr. Parker uh, what that mainly means is I'm an old person. <laughs> so, but I still remember it. And, and um, so, um, I, you know, I, I, I know we, we don't have a, this is not an agenda item. Uh, we're not going to be able to uh, have a, uh, a, any kind of a deep discussion on this. Uh, but, uh, I do appreciate, and, and I don't know that I can speak for everybody. I think I can, because I think we, I think we have five people here that want to do what's best for kids. Uh, so um, we need to work on doing that. And I, I and I want to, and I'm going to hopefully be quiet, uh, hopefully. But I just want to. My main thank you today is to our members of the Ram Band who are here tonight, uh, and, um, um, you know, I have not been at your rehearsals, um, but I, I know pretty well how hard you work, or I've got an idea, and I, I thank you. And, and you know, I've, I, I taught, uh, I've, I've still got, again, I'm so old, I have former students that are 68. And, and, and so I'm still on Facebook with, and I mean, we can all boo when we hear Facebook, but, but, it, but it's, you know, so I'm with these kids. I still have these kids as part of my family for uh, how many years is this? I started in 72, you know? I started at the age of 20, and, and, and so... Um, Anyway, thank you, and you will never, the rest of your life, regret being in band. And 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 I, and the last thing. Well, no, I said that was it. I'm gonna I'm gonna honor my word. So, uh, and I think we have a a, a couple of other comments. Uh, uh, Miss Certain, the Dr. McNeely. Actually, mine is not up to that's more okay. Okay. Uh, did anybody else want to say anything on East Side, Dr. McNeely? Yes, I certainly do. And could I? I'm going to interrupt just to say that nobody had a better high school band director than Dr. McNeely. She will not argue with me on that. I will not argue with. And you. if we want to call somebody a chief, I've, that's that's the time. chief. <laughs> By yourself? No. I'm talking about the brain. Oh, I thought you said that. Okay. <laughs> my bad, my bad, my fault. Sorry. Sorry, Dr. McDowell. It's okay. I want to thank everyone for attending to address the board in regard to the East Side Marching Band. I also want to acknowledge the 67 email letters that I have received also addressing the East Side Band. And the lady, Mrs. Days, who called 
um, talking about the lady on vacation. That was me. And um, that first day of vacation, I received 37 emails about the East Side Band. So even on vacation, I was reading and reading and enjoying every single letter. Usually when citizens call in to address the board by phone or in person, when we convene for our business meeting, I normally don't comment. Tonight is different for me. I was in a marching and concert band from seventh grade to 12th. There were no middle schools back then. And so we started at, in seventh grade and with the band. I was in Orlando at the mighty Jones High Marching Tigers. And even though that was many years ago in a different era, like Mr. Uh, Chairman Hyatt was speaking about, the band was very much like the East Side Ram Band during those years. The historical aspect, very similar to the demographics where I attended. The students loved that band director, Mr. Chief James Wilson, and we called him Chief. I can relate to the long afternoon rehearsals, getting ready for state competitions where we were always rated superior, whether it was for sight reading, performance exhibition, etc. Band camps before school started each year were enjoyed as well. My wish my wish and recommendation after being involved in conversation with some of the school district leadership is to have a meeting where every voice is heard as we have listened tonight and have read the many letters that you sent. We all live in this community and should come totally, I've heard this several times tonight, and I agree, that we should come totally together and not be divided. I know that we can mitigate changes from the past and reach a peaceful solution, a resolution, I should say. The meeting that I would hope that we would have should merit the kind of review that we need so that we can no longer uh, further erode the love that we have for Eastside High. I respect each and every one of you. The tradition of the current band with band director Mr. Hughes and students from the era of the band of Mr. Parker can and should continue in the spirit of the greatness of both legacies. I have much more to say and Mr. Andrew is going to know that when he sees me in the morning He's going to hear more and more and more. And more. Thank you for say, stating that. Because we are going to look at some ways that the current state of the band and the past. I know if I were home in Orlando and Jones High, 
were having similarities of that we've heard tonight, I would be right there saying some of the same comments. I think about my daughter who was in the GHS band. Same scenarios, band rehearsals and late times and things. And she said, Mom, don't take up all of the time with your stuff about Jones High Tigers. But I do want to say, we beat your butts, Eastside Rams. We always competed um, with you all back in the day. But you were not Eastside then. It was another name. Um, but it was still the, the high school kids that I'm talking about. But we could not surpass you when we went to those, I call them festivals. I don't know what they are called now, but they were all competitions. I love each and every one of you. You are all about the children. That's what you were stating tonight. I know that there is resolution. The superintendent is going to get with me tomorrow. And if we have to call another meeting for the media, so that, what do you call it, Mrs. Peck, so that we can talk about it, a workshop, I don't know. But he and I will talk. He got quiet then. Thank you for participating tonight. Thank you all, every last one of you, no matter how you stand or how you sit. You love your school. And so that's what's important here, and bringing this community together and showing that we understand each other and doing the right thing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Dr. McNeely. I will like to say to all of you, all of my uh, colleagues back there, the band directors, uh, if you need someone to work with your clarinet section, you, Dr. McNeely is available, and and and. Uh, also, she's a pretty darn good pianist, so if you need somebody for S&A, uh, we, we might want to look at that. Uh, but uh, uh, any, anyway, um, uh, and okay, so, and I, I will say that the, the thing, uh, and of course, this, a point that I made earlier is this isn't on the agenda, uh, but I think, you know, I, I sort of think all meetings should be about music education. Uh, it may be, and I'm so uh, happy to see uh, uh, it, it, we, we've, the, the folks that are here tonight, I hope I'm not missing somebody, but it looks to me like we've got some folks that are responsible for a whole lot of any good that comes to our high school music students, because we've got uh, some of the great middle school teachers, and I would put them up against any county, anywhere, period. And I'm so proud of them. Um, okay, now we're, I think we're done with band, darn it. And uh, now it's time for uh, Superintendent uh, Board Member Request and uh, Ms. Certain. Thank you, Chairman Hyatt. My request, we, and not to, that I didn't want to acknowledge the band, I appreciate you all coming in as well, but I would like to kind of maybe we get to the root of the issue um, so that our youngest learners can have free space to participate in band because as was said earlier, so I was going to ask Mr. Um, Rella maybe to expand as well as working with Ms. Um, why is what we can do as part of maybe the Beyond the Bell space and using ESSER funds to maybe do something to address that need of our youngest learners in there, um, being able to get some music education as well as some tutoring, I think. Ms. Um, uh, Merricks used to use music to teach math and all. And that is just something I think. And so maybe within the next four to six weeks, Mr. Rella, you can get some students involved, get some ideas, Ms. Wise, and y'all can maybe come up with something and come back to the board with something in the next month or so um, with that. 
And then I think also maybe um, since we kind of are awash in, in mill funds, I don't say awash, but we have some more, and maybe we dedicate an additional allotment because right now, if I'm recalling correctly, the bands are just getting like $50,000 in rotation. I don't know, they're not every year, but it kind of goes in rotation. Maybe we consider as a board um, allocating more funding from the mill to the bands so that the, at the middle and high school level so we can infuse some additional funds. And then we just heard um, Ms. Barris, Barris speak about the need that she had there. That's something that we need to consider there because the tax rolls are higher, the mill is coming in higher. That's a request I'd like to make that maybe we, Mr. Rella, you direct us and you come back and tell us what we can allocate more um, to our middle and high school bands to take that pressure off the families of fair share as well as um, opening up some opportunities for children who, um, whose families may not be able to um, participate pay for them to participate in band, you know, and, and us to do some things along there. Those are two requests I have, but, and I'm, I'm making that request there today primarily because of what the emails and what I've heard here today. But I've long said um, before I was elected that there are children who couldn't participate in band and in chorus and drama because of the standardized testing. And we've, we as a district have got to get that, get that right. And I know some of the the, the grant opportunities we had in today was addressing some, some additional learning opportunities. I sent Ms. Wise a note, but I just want to share with you all. I spoke with a parent yesterday, a garden of, of two children that attend um, Lake Forest Elementary. And I'm gonna tell you, I was heartbroken because we failed that family. Kindergarten, they didn't have a certified teacher for over half the school year. First grade, repeat. Second grade, the boys were in two separate classrooms. One of them was in a classroom with the teacher who was out the majority of the, of the year. They're going into third grade. So we'll hear people who will speak disparagingly of those children and their families for their learning deficits. But we have, we've spent money in this district paying employees, but those children haven't gotten a, a free and appropriate public education. We failed them, those two as well as the others that were in those classrooms. So we gotta get serious about what we're doing. All of us up here, all of us. I'm not doing the work, I'm not in the classroom, so I advocate really hard for us to bring our best, for our employees to come to, to deliver good instruction to our students, for our parents to bring them. I, I went to so many backpack giveaways and they gave me 10 minutes to speak and I had something, I tried to nail it down in eight minutes. I, I didn't start out at eight minutes, but I tried to nail it in eight, then eight minutes. The importance of our families doing their part because when I come up here and when I'm in the schools and when I'm meeting with our administrators, I'm, I'm, I'm making requests because I want us to be, to be doing our job so we can serve our families. But I want our families to bring us children every day to school and for them to be rested, to be on time, and to be in class ready to learn. But when they get there, we gotta do our part. These boys, these two twins, these children have been in school and they didn't have a certified teacher. I don't wanna hear nobody telling me about they ain't doing well because they, they misbehaving. So we got something to do. We, if we address it back then, we'll have children when they get to middle and high middle school, they won't have to have intensive reading and they can be in band. They can choose that as their elective. I hope we can go back to seven periods. That's what I wanted to do. So they'll have some space in their, in their schedule for that. But I think it's just something that we, we got to start looking and, and exploring problems and solutions outside of what we've been doing for a number of years. So that's my rant. Thank you, Mr. Rell and Ms. Wise. I hope y'all get back to me in the next four weeks, get back to us as a board. You know, I'm not, I know you got a whole lot and it's the start of the school year, but I think we got to have some, some parameters on when we come back and we bring stuff to the board and to Superintendent Andrews so we can move forward with some things. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Sertin. And I, I will say that I'm glad to hear you talk about the seventh period. That's great. And, uh, and I, I think I was asking maybe when we first had ESSER funds, if that might not be a better use for it. So, so um, I, I really would like to, I'll give another, I gave, already gave an amen to Ms. Barris, now I get an amen to Ms. Certain. And um, so, um, uh, Dr. McNeely. I forgot to mention, and when I, um, um, saw Mr. Alexander in the audience, 
I was thinking about what they have to do sometimes with buyback. We don't, won't mention what that is, but um, we can certainly buy back instruments. Um, Mrs. Barris asked me, you still have your instrument? And so many people would be willing to donate um, instruments. And I'm not talking about the alumni band because you all need to keep your instruments because you perform so much in the community. But I'm saying other folk who were originally in bands, why not help the district? I know they would have to go to somewhere to be tuned and I don't know what else, Mr. Uh, Chairman, you know, you would know more about that. You can't just have an instrument sitting around in a case forever without having someone to do something. But I know that would work if we ask citizens, please give us instruments to help us with the ones that um, we are going to have to purchase and find money for. I'm just saying, I, I, I thought of that all of a sudden when I saw Mr. Alexander out there. Thank you. Uh, I, I, uh, Dr. Pauls. Yeah. Um, before I go, to the, what I'm going to say is that uh, it was good to see both groups, the group, the present and the past, together here, uh, standing up for, for the bands. Uh, I thought that was, that was important. What I what got me is, you know, right now in this dis, in this state in this district. We're short on, on, on funds. I don't know if people know that. We've lost the uh, amount of students we had. That's because of the pandemic. And uh, so we have to look at different things, the way we get money. So I'm going to make a suggestion that I've been working on for about six years. And uh, I want to make a request, and I think the superintendent knows what I'm going to say. We're working, I'm asking the, uh, our, our finance people, and they're working on it, for the last six years to look at the electrical bills of the five companies that furnish electricity in this district. And you'll, I think that when I bring it in, you'll be stunned. It's, we have Clay Electric in the West. We have Duke up in uh, High Springs, Florida Power Light at Hawthorne and, and Waldo. And at one time, Latcher had one. GRU does 75% of our electric. And when you see what they charge us, you will be stunned. They, and it's not like you say, well, they hire everybody high. The rate that we pay for electricity is ridiculous to GRU. It's not the county, it's not the GRU company, it's the people that tell them that what they got to charge. And I'll bring it in, just give me a chance, but you say, if you want things that, that, we can't, that we can't afford now, Amy, this is a way to get it, too. And I was involved with the one mill ever since, too. I think it's a good idea, we, but we have to rewrite, rewrite what we, we say we'll do it for. But that's not a bad idea. And we're going up to 20, 21 or $22 million this year, and we were 13 when we started in 2008. So that was a good idea. But I'm gonna, I, 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 wanna, I hope you look at it. And, uh, the GRU, it's not just because they transferred $36 million from GRU, and GRU had to borrow money just to, to pay that $36 million. But it's, it's going to be something, I think you, uh, you know, gas will be in the room. About five years ago, I, I, I took that rate and took the second highest, and we'd had $1.8 million more for our budget. $1.8 million. That's the albatross we're working under. And right now, it's getting to the point where we can't afford to do that. And I said, I won't be here, but I want this district to be in good shape. If you want to get things and you say you want, want to look for things, yeah, there's a way to, to get more money, and we should be able to have that money. Back in 2008, the state was going to deregulate, and we could have ch chosen. And then they gave discounts to places like our school board. But then when the state said you had to go where they tell you to go, 
to get your electricity. That, that went away. And, when I, and I want people to understand, and if you, want, if you see it and you think I'm wrong, I, I, think, I think you'll see it another way. This gives you a way. You're talking about need of money, right? Well, this is the way, wait, wait. This is a way that, to raise money. And I want you to understand that. I, it, and I want and I've asked for this for years. I've, I think I've talked to the superintendent. And I want it to be made public to people know what our district is going through and under the hardship we're going through. Right now, this is a hardship. And it's not the same as having high rates in the, in the public. This is just something that shouldn't be. So I just think it's a time that while we're talking about this, and if we want to have money for, to do things like this, you know, I, I hope we, we can do this. But the other thing is, I'm the oldest person up here. So when I've seen the East Side Band way back to 1970, it was very good, but I want to also congratulate the young people that came tonight too, okay? And if you want, we say we work together, I think this is a good start. So I'm not a musician, but like Mr. Uh, Hyatt here, but I like to listen to music. And Eastside did put on a good show back, back then too. I'll admit to that. Um, Thank you. Dr. Paulson, I wasn't trying to interrupt you. What I was trying to do to, is I was going to ask if you had a specific question, and that's you're going to be dealing with the superintendent tomorrow on that? Not the, I'm waiting. We're working. What happened? We're working on getting the, the rates of everyone, oh. GRU, Duke, et cetera, far power and light, and then we're going to go ahead and see what we, about our electric, well, also the number, well, the electricity we we spend on exactly, and specifically GRU. And you take what the other rates are or whatever we do that reduce it, and I think you'll find out that we are under more of an uh, albatross than any other school district in the state. Any other school district, no school district in the state is under this, this, this weight. Okay. And that's, I mean, and I've been, I'm sitting, I'm getting ready to leave, so I want, I want our district to get its fair share so we can spend on things like instruments and things like that. We got the mill passed, and I'm glad we did that eight years ago, 12 years ago. And, it get, and it's a good idea. You know, we can expand it since it's grown. So anyway, I'm done. Okay, thank you. Um, and I, I'm going I'm to close out the meeting, so I'm just announcing that now. So we don't get any extra uh, comments, but I, I just wanted to close out by saying I, I talked to Superintendent Andrew today, and uh, there is all already staff working on, uh, and I think we've got a couple of band directors that are in on the discussion uh, uh, working with Ms. Rollo and uh, about what are some things we can do to expand equity for these kids? And, and I know, you know, uh, like our whole band lives, uh, there, were, there were always some instruments that were paid for, but we really need to ex expand that. Uh, and I don't want the district to tell any band director what they need to expand. I want the band director to say, what do you think of this? or let us know what you think, what you need the most. I, I think this, is, this approach has been uh, fairly uh, helpful, very helpful in Osceola County. Uh, same sort of thing where they're trying to expand the number of kids who financially can be in the program. So I know, I just wanted to announce that I don't have a, I think he's got a lot more than I'm ready to, to say because they're still working on it, but um, I really do appreciate uh, appreciate that, and uh, we're going to uh, see if we can do what's best for all the kids uh, district wide. So, um, and I, I really appreciate uh, that from everybody. So, uh, thank you all, and we are adjourned.